Okay, my topic is uh, talking about G event, and I really want to keep it very high level philosophical about kind of my transition in my programming as a, as a Python programmer, going from writing scripts to using Twisted, which we just had to talk about um, in one of the open spaces, and then moving to G event. So one of the things you do is when you're writing a Python script, you tend to write linear imperative code when you're first doing scripts and they're doing simple things. But when you need to start doing really complex things, you start having to like wait on I.O. or do multiple things at a time, and you start looking at things like asynchronous programming to try and solve that problem. That'll take you to toolkits like Twisted, and they're designed really well for doing that. Um, what they do is they allow you to initiate an operation, and then you get notified later with a callback when the I.O. is complete. Another way of tackling that problem is, of course, with threading. But threading is a nightmare. I highly disrecommend anyone from ever even going after threading at all. And if you have any questions about it, I'll give you my card and I'll give you a paper and I'll talk to you a long time about why you should do that. But anyway. Um, so Twisted is a great way of handling I.O. and handling blockage. They do it through an asynchronous, I'm going to get over here out of the way a little bit. They do it asynchronously, you get callbacks, things of that nature. But that's a great idea, sounds great, until you start writing a lot of code in it. What ends up happening is you end up with a lot of code that's trying to share a lot of state through a lot of callbacks. And it can be very difficult to kind of track what's happening in your code because you in your mind are thinking of this linear problem that in your mind is synchronous, but you have all these I.O. asynchronous things happening in the middle of it, and it's forcing you to break all the logic and break all the state and carry it in between those steps. That can be a very unnatural thing to do. It can be very difficult to debug. Now, Twisted is still very good in handling that problem. And one of the things they introduced, if you're not aware of it and you are a Twisted programmer, you should definitely look into it. It's a thing called the inline callbacks decorator. Now, that's a lot of gobbledygook to basically say, I can write a method, and I put this decorator on that method, and I can write what looks like synchronous code. But in the steps of that method, I can use the generator features of Python and yield up deferreds out of there, which if you're a twisted programmer, you know what that means, that allows me to look at what likes, looks like synchronous code, but it's really asynchronous. And that's a very powerful thing, because now your code is much more readable, it's much more maintainable, it makes a lot more sense in terms of what you're trying to accomplish. You're programming what you're trying to solve rather than programming how Twisted forces you to solve the problem. So once you get to that point, you start to think, wow, wouldn't it be great if I had that all the time? Well, therein comes G-Event. So what is G-Event? G-Event is a Greenlit-based event library. It's asynchronous also, but it takes a different approach. What are Greenlits? Greenlits are basically very lightweight tasks in Python that each have their own stacks, and they run seemingly as if they're threaded, but they're not. They're really coroutines. They only, it's cooperative multitasking. They only return back control to a reactor or to another coroutine at explicit points. So what ends up happening is, is you can write functions that look extremely linear and you don't have any um, callbacks that you have to deal with. You don't have any yields and the inline callbacks decorator like you have in um, Twisted. And what happens is, is the code, as it passes into these, what would normally be blocking operations, goes into the G-Event reactor. And if your code's going to block, it'll automatically go and invoke another tasklet for you. And that will take off. Uh, you can do implicit or explicit. You can specifically hand control over, over to another individual task, or you can leave it to the reactor to take whichever ones are available. You can do it either way. The bottom line is, what you end up with, though, is very linear looking code, even though the operation you're doing may take minutes to complete, and you may have seven of those operations running and they're all interleaved. And so I, I as a programmer myself, started in a very uh, linear imperative method, moved to Twisted, and it finally ended up at G-Event, and it really is a nice place to be. So if you're ever challenged with those problems of asynchronous multitasking inside of a complex, long-running process, Twisted is where you start normally. G-Event is probably where you're going to end up. So I encourage you to take a look at it. Thanks.